In your house, Beware of Dog 1 and 2 took place on the 26th and 28th of May 1996. Beware of Dog was supposed to be like any other In Your House event, a two-hour pay-per-view. However, a power cut during the original pay-per-view broadcast led to the feed getting cut off, and the WWF decided to air a second Beware of Dog that featured matches that weren't shown during the first event. I'm going to show you when the feed got cut, I'll show you how the WWF and Vince McMahon reacted, and we'll take a look at each and every match that happened at Beware of Dog 1 and 2 in chronological order. In the end, this should be a definitive Beware of Dog review that includes everything that happened both in and out of the ring. I'll flip from WWE Network footage and live pay-per-view footage during this video too, so apologies in advance. The overall video quality in this upload is going to be all over the place. Beware of Dog, the original event took place on May 26th in Florence, South Carolina. Around 6,000 fans are in attendance, and during the free-for-all, we can see what matches were supposed to take place at this event. Mark Merrow vs Hunter Hearst Hemsley, Steve Austin vs Savio Vega in a strap match, Yokozuna vs Vader, The Undertaker vs Goldust in an IC title casket match, and Shawn Michaels defending his WWF title against Davey Boy Smith. An additional match took place during the free-for-all, the Godwins vs the Smoking Guns. And the Smoking Guns ended up beating Henry and Phineas here for the tag team belts. Phineas Godwin got distracted when Billy Gunn gave Sonny a kiss, and this led to the Godwins losing the match. Goldust also cut a promo on The Undertaker before the free-for-all ended, and ironically, the lights began to flicker to signal The Undertaker was nearby. When the pay-per-view began, recording artist Colin Ray sang America the Beautiful, and this performance was removed from the video release and WWE Network versions of Beware of Dog. From here, we can jump over to the network version for our first match, just for the sake of better video quality. It's Hunter Hearst Hemsley vs Mark Merrow. Remember, it was Hemsley who, in storyline, brought Sable to the WWF and Mero's out here trying to defend her honour. We've got a slugfest in the ring to start us off and already Mero's pulling off planches and a slingshot leg drop. The wild man takes a thumb to the eye and Hunter tries to get his act together, but he ends up taking the Ric Flair corner bump and he hits the mat after a big left hand. Hemsley gets a break after dodging a corner charge from Mero, he throws Mark into the opposite ring post immediately afterwards, and Hunter then performs an armbar takedown before beating beating Mero up in the corner. Vince McMahon then mentions the storm going on outside the arena as Hunter stays on offense. Doc Hendricks also spoke about the weather conditions during the free-for-all. Mero takes a Harley race knee and Hunter then refocuses on the arm and shoulder. As Jerry Lawler drools over Hunter's valet, Mero tries a quick cover but Helmsley kicks out. Mero then tries a backslide but his shoulder gives out and Hunter's valet looks more and more pissed off as Jerry Lawler keeps yakking on about how beautiful she is. Mero gets his arm wrapped around the ring post a few times and back in the ring there's more damage to the wild man's arm and shoulder. Triple H tells Sable to keep her eyes on the action as Mark Mero gets dissected by the future King of Kings. It goes to the mat where Hemsley keeps an armbar applied and when Mark frees himself Hemsley performs a knee drop on the injured body part. We go straight back to the mat with more pressure getting applied by Hunter Hearst Hemsley. Sable watches on as her man gets taught a lesson by Hunter. Mark then tries to steal a pinfall victory but he pays for his crimes with a big clothesline and when he tries to go on offense his arm gives way and Triple H goes back to his focused attack. If Mark ends up completely no selling all this during the final moments of the match I'm going to be really really annoyed. Hunter jumps off the top turnbuckle with a shitty looking forearm shot to Mero's shoulder. Another arm submission gets applied and this time Hunter uses the ropes for some extra leverage. Hunter goes up again for another top rope move but he gets his little degenerate smashed on the top rope and the wild man then performs a top rope hurricane rana. He is still selling the arm thankfully. Helmsley takes a head scissor takedown followed by a back body drop. Mero pulls off a diving sunset flip that looked great but Helmsley kicked out at two. Mark then tries his somersault senton over the top rope and he misses. This is Hunter's chance to end the match right here but instead he gets in the ring to trash talk Sable. He tells his former valet to watch Mero get pedigreed, but Sable turns her head and Hunter decides this isn't good enough. Hunter goes to the outside, he tells Sable once again to pay attention. He goes for another pedigree, but he takes a catapult into the ring post. This moves enough to put Helmsley away for the 1-2-3, so it was a pretty mediocre match with a terrible finish. Absolutely nothing special here at all. 
Camp Cornets backstage along with Diana Hart and Jim Cornette says they're going to drop a bombshell on HBK tonight. Shawn Michaels has made his bed and he's going to have to lie in it all alone even though previously he wanted Diana to lie in it. To explain this, Diana Hart accused Shawn Michaels of trying to seduce her and that's really the basis of this whole storyline. Shawn denies it while Diana and Kim Cornette are saying HBK is a dirty dog. Cornette got Owen Hart a manager's license for tonight, so Owen's going to stand in Davy's corner for our upcoming WWF title match. The next match was originally scheduled to be the strap match featuring Steve Austin and Savio Vega and this is when the storm outside caused a massive power cut in the arena and the satellite feed got cut off. I found two live versions of Beware of Dog and you can see how it looked for viewers at home depending on their pay per view provider. This is a pretty catastrophic turn of events, the strap match went ahead for viewers in the building but there were no lights in the arena and fans had a hard time trying to see what was going on. Folks at home were given technical difficulty messages on screen and a promise that In Your House would resume soon, but the show didn't come back on for a very long time. While the feed was cut off, Vince McMahon was able to record a message and the tape message was aired to viewers at home. Here's what McMahon had to say. Vince McMahon, Jerry Lawler, ladies and gentlemen, with you. This is uh, coming to you on videotape. We're feeding you with auxiliary power through our satellite unit. We regret for this... Uh, in position. We stated earlier that there were all kind of electrical storms on the outside. Unfortunately, powers of the building has been completely blown. We're hopeful, however, of bringing you the last two matches. The Undertaker versus Goldust, as well as, of course, Shawn Michaels defending a WWF title against the British Bulldog. Our matches are continuing here in South Carolina. Hopefully, we're going to be able to come back to you in time to present those matches. Nonetheless, we invite you to tune in tomorrow night, Monday Night Raw, for an update on exactly what's going to go on as it relates to these matches scheduled for pay-per-view. There was already, by the way, an encore slated for Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. That may indeed turn into the real pay-per-view. We don't know. So again, bear with us. Hopefully, we will be with you shortly when electrical power is stored here momentarily. And we thank you very much for your patience. This announcement was played a few times as staff waited for the power to get restored in hopes of showing the final two matches of the show. In the end, only the main event match made it to the pay-per-view, there wasn't enough time for the intercontinental casket match, so Beware of Dog 1 only featured two matches in total. By the way, according to Bruce Prichard, Vince McMahon was calm throughout this whole thing. Everyone was expecting him to blow a gasket but he took it in his stride apparently and he was even a little jovial about the whole thing as the company waited for the par to get restored. I think Vince knew it was totally out of his control and there was nothing he could do about it. When the part came back on, McMahon made the decision to go straight to the main event and he could hopefully offer the other matches during the encore presentation of In Your House. The pay-per-view feed comes back and Vince McMahon thanks fans for hanging around. Davey makes his entrance alongside his wife Diana, Owen then shows up moments later. HBK says he's still focused after getting news about this bombshell Camp Cornette's about to drop and after the power cut. And Sean says it's not beware of dog, it's beware of the click. Michaels then bumps into Mr. Perfect and the two make eye contact before HBK's entrance. This would set up a little more story for the next WWF pay-per-view but we'll talk about that another time. The champ gets in the ring, we can see what he thinks about this whole cluster as he gestures to the hard camera when inside the ropes and McMahon announces that yes, the matches that fans didn't get to see tonight will be presented during the encore presentation of Beware of Dog. The matches would end up taking place live during a set of WWF Superstar tapings and the pay-per-view encore would be known as Beware of Dog 2. Clarence Mason says Sean has tried to break up the Bulldogs family, so right now HBK is getting served. He's going to court as a defendant. Michaels is being charged with the attempted alienation of affection. So, in other words, Michaels is going to court for trying to slip one into Diana Smith. The bell then rings as Michaels holds the court papers in his hands. He decides to rip up the document before Davy Boy attacks, so I'm guessing that was the bombshell Jim Cornette was talking about earlier on. For clarification, Michaels always said he had nothing to do with Diana Smith and this was all a plan from Kemp Cornette to throw him off his game. 
Davy Boy attacks, but Sean counters a catapult attempt. Bulldog takes an arm drag before Sean finds himself on the apron. HBK slides under Davy's legs, and the Bulldog gets out of the ring to avoid sweet chin music. Davy gets wiped out with a plancha before the two men take a breather, and when the match resumes in the ring, we've got HBK applying pressure with a headlock. Davy tries to escape, but this leads to the champ performing a headlock takeover. Davy's a little more successful the second time around when a back suplex attempt gets countered, but he's still able to apply a bear hug. Sean gets out and he tries a quick cover, but Davy kicks out of two, only to take an enziguri moments later. Diana watches on as HBK applies a short arm scissors. This stays locked in for quite some time, as did the first headlock earlier on. I think what's happened here is there wasn't enough time for two matches, but there was a little too much time for just one match, so we're going to see quite a lot of holds in this one just to extend the run time out a bit. Hopefully this means we'll see a million chin locks. Davy stands up while still locked in the arm scissors and he dumps HBK to the canvas. Michaels then takes a back body drop as the commentators talk about HBK possibly being a womanizer. Vince is defending his golden boy of course while the king's calling Sean a pervo. Bulldog shows off his pythons as he gains more and more confidence. He puts Michaels on the mat a few times before applying a Davy Boy Smith chin lock. Sean breaks free, but he then finds himself in a backbreaker submission, and when Sean tries a crucifix pin, he ends up taking a Samoan drop followed by a leg drop. Chin lock number two gets applied, and Diana, like the rest of us, really likes what she sees. This one stays locked in for a solid two minutes, and seriously, I've seen plenty of Raw and Nitro matches and bedroom action that doesn't last this long. HBK breaks free though, and he tumbles out of the ring after clipping Davy's knee, and I don't think that was intentional. On the outside, Davy uses the guardrail to do some damage, and we get more time wasting when Bulldog has to get in and out of the ring to break the referee's count. It's clear as day now that these two are trying to extend the match runtime until the show goes off the air, and, you know, it doesn't make for a very exciting match, but then again, it's not really their fault either. Sean performs a slingshot clothesline and both men hit the mat after crashing into each other. When the two get up, we see HBK's signature forearm delivered with a lot of speed, and after kipping up, Sean performs a double axe handle from the top rope. The referee then takes a spectacular bump when Davy runs into him, look at that. And with no official in the ring, Sean's able to hit his elbow drop before tuning up the band for sweet chin music. Owen Hart then gets inside the ropes and the King of Hearts ends up taking the super kick, and the second referee runs down to officiate the match as Davy goes on offense. Sean counters the running par slam, he pulls off a German suplex. Kyoto counts the three, while Earl Hebner also counts the three on the outside, and Davy Boy Smith's music plays as Hart Finkel announces we have a new WWF champion. Sean's shoulders were on the mat when he performed the suplex, but so was Davies, so we have a bit of confusion after the bell with HBK saying he didn't lose. The debate goes on with Hebner raising Sean's hand while Kyoto raises Davies, Gorilla Monsoon takes the belt from Diana and Gorilla makes the final decision. The match is officially a draw and therefore Shawn Michaels is still WWF Champion. We see replays of the suplex and both men's shoulders were indeed on the mat, so it's also announced that there's going to be a rematch between these two in the very near future. All things considered, this match wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. Sean and Davey had to work under some unforeseen circumstances, and as mentioned earlier on, you can tell the layout of the match was changed just to accommodate the remaining pay-per-view runtime. Thankfully though, the two men get another opportunity to face each other at the next WWF pay-per-view event, King of the Ring 1996. The next night on Raw, Vince McMahon confirmed what he said at Beware of Dog the night before. The encore presentation is going to include the missing matches from the live pay-per-view. At Beware of Dog 1, the strap match took place, as did Undertaker vs Goldust, and in that original strap match, Savio Vega defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stipulations were added to this match, if Savio won then Ted DiBiase would have to leave WWF, if Austin won, Savio would have to become DiBiase's personal chauffeur. On Raw, DiBiase protested the outcome and because the match happened in the dark, the result was scrapped from the record books and Austin will get another opportunity at Beware of Dog 2. So, on May 28th, 1996, in the middle of a set of WWF Superstar tapings held in North Charleston, South Carolina, the WWF put on matches that were missing from the first Beware of Dog show. You would have been pretty pleased if you already bought tickets to these tapings. The WWF did show the Shawn Michaels and Hunter Hearst Hemsley matches on the encore before showing the remaining matches, so let's pick it up at Savio Vega vs Steve Austin. 
The winner has to touch all four corners in succession to win. There's no pinfalls and no submissions. And we also have a new commentary team for Beware of Dog 2, Jim Ross and Mr. Perfect. Austin stops Vega from getting in the ring, but he has to let him in eventually. Bit of a cagey start here, with neither man wanting to make a mistake, but Austin strikes first with a few right hands. Jim Ross reminds everyone that these two already beat the crap out of each other two nights ago in the dark as Savio pulls off a back body drop, and when Austin ends up on the outside, Savio uses the strap to ram Stone Cold into the ring apron. When the match gets back inside the rope, Savio whips his opponent over and over again. Steve forgets that he's tied to Vega as he tries to leave the ring. Savio whips Austin a few times before suplexing him back in, and we then see a spinning back kick from Vega. Savio then tries to touch all four corners, but he gets stopped when Steve shoves that strap right up his ass, and Stone Cold then gives Vega a little payback by whipping his back a few times. The fight goes to the outside and it's all stone cold here. Vega gets wrecked at the ring apron and guardrail before stone cold chokes him out. Austin then suplexes his opponent while Savio's on the apron, but he gets stopped from touching all four corners when Savio Vega spins him around the ring. Both men are looking a little tired and a little sore right now, but our match continues with a clothesline from Savio and Austin gets whipped again. We go straight back to the outside where Austin takes a suplex. His attempts at fighting back gets met with more whips from the strap. Savio then tries dragging Austin to each corner while touching the top turnbuckles, but Austin performs a leg sweep and the counter resets. Neither man can gain an advantage here and they are going to continue beating the hell out of each other. Austin takes a superplex and DiBiase begins worrying about his future employment. Another attempt to touch all four corners gets stopped with a high impact spine buster from Stone Cold, you don't see that too often. Austin then chokes Vega out and he thinks he's done enough damage to win the match, but Savio's not out yet and another attempt at winning the match gets stopped at turnbuckle number 4. Austin resorts to a low blow before a few tombstone counters send Savio out of the ring. Vega once again gets choked out and Austin must have been feeling confident as he heads to the top rope. He gets pulled down by Vega and Savio has yet another chance to win this match, so Vega does a little damage at the ring post before getting back inside for the match finish. Austin applies the million dollar dream and Vega touches two corners while locked in the hold. He gives up before touching corner 3 so Austin decides he's going to drag Savio from one corner to another to win this strap match. Savio ends up touching the corners too while being dragged behind Stone Cold and the match ends when Austin launches Vega into turnbuckle number 4 and Savio's declared the winner. Stone Cold had no idea that Vega was touching the corners while being dragged around the ring. This means Ted DiBiase has to leave WWF, he'd show up on WCW television where he'd become part of the New World Order faction, and as for Stone Cold, well, he would do okay too, he'd win the 1996 King of the Ring a few weeks after this bout. This match wasn't bad, but we have seen better strap matches in the past. One thing is for sure though, Austin and Savio beat the hell out of each other in this one. It may not be as flashy as other matches, and some may even say it drags on in places, but it looked like a very tiring match for both guys, and no doubt both men must have been feeling sore after having two strap matches in the space of a few days. Shawn Michaels is backstage trying to answer fan questions on his super high tech gaming laptop. The camera stays on him for ages and he doesn't press a single key. Back in the ring we've got the battle of the big boys, Vader vs Yokozuna. And those of you who have watched Yokozuna matches from this time period should know what to expect here. Vader injured Yokozuna with three Vader bombs to the big man's leg, Yokozuna is out for revenge tonight at Beware of Dog 2. The match starts with the two exchanging shots and the referee tells Yoko to back off after Vader takes a throat thrust. Yokozuna gets in a sumo stance while Vader takes a three point stance. Vader then chickens out so the two go for it once again and again Vader chickens out. Third time's a charm though as the two monsters run into each other and it's Vader who gets knocked down. The crowd loved this spot by the way. And Yokozuna sends his opponent out of the ring with a big old clothesline. When the match resumes we see those signature Vader shots and Yokozuna gets stunned. Yoko is able to bring Vader down with an elbow drop and clearly Yokozuna wants to repay Vader for the injury he caused. Vader falls out of the ring and he limps when getting back inside the ropes. He once again throws a few haymakers at Yokozuna, but once again he falls victim to another elbow drop. Just when you think Vader is done for, he comes back with more punches before trying to body slam his opponent, but he can't get Yoko off his feet and instead Yokozuna pulls off a Uranagi. 
The big man then goes for the banzai drop. Jim Cornette tries to interfere. Jim gets thrown in the ring and he begins to panic as Yokozuna approaches him. And when Cornette tries to shake Yokozuna's hand, the big man squeezes down before Jim takes a headbutt. Yokozuna then tries to bonsai drop Cornet, but Vader saves his manager. Yokozuna crashes to the mat and Vader goes for the injured leg with a few splashes. Vader then performs his Vader bomb finishing move and the man they call Vader wins via pinfall. Go into this one with the right expectations. Yokozuna wasn't the performer he once was unfortunately, but there are still a few moments in this match that were alright. Because McMahon wanted the WWF title match to happen at Beware of Dog 1 following the par cut, the Beware of Dog 2 main event is the Goldust vs Undertaker casket match. Goldust's IC title is up for grabs, so the Phenom could become Intercontinental Champion for the first time in his career. Goldust is in the ring as The Undertaker's music plays in the arena, Paul Bear walks down while The Undertaker waits behind Goldust, and The Undertaker strikes first with a surprise uppercut. Taker stalks the champ around the outside of the ring and when the two get back inside, Goldust gets thrown down to the mat. Goldust then takes a hard corner Irish whip followed by a back elbow that knocks him a bit loopy. The Undertaker then tries to throw Goldust into the casket but the champ stops in his tracks and he ends up getting punched in the mouth instead. Marlena watches on as The Undertaker throws Goldust on top of the casket. Goldust then takes a shot at the ring steps and again on that gold casket. Back in the ring, Taker performs a body slam followed by a big leg drop and the dead man excites the audience with old school. Taker has that evil look in his eyes as he chokes his opponent out. Goldust finally replies with a back elbow. He then performs a body slam but the Phenom sits up and Goldust then tries his low uppercut but The Undertaker doesn't move an inch. I think this might have been a communication issue because Goldust stays on his opponent with a punch to the midsection and then we see a tombstone pile driver from the IC champion. This was kinda out of nowhere. Undertaker's on the receiving end of a clothesline before Goldust tells the officials to open up that casket. Undertaker goes in and all Goldust has to do is shut the lid, but the Phenom fights out and our match continues on. Goldust takes a big boot but he does manage to throw Undertaker out of the ring moments later. The dead man gets choked out with some TV cables on the outside but back in the ring Goldust goes down after a few right hands. Going to admit the overall flow of this match has been a bit messy and there isn't much of a story being told inside the ropes. Goldust puts Undertaker in a sleeper and it knocks the dead man out cold. All Goldust has to do is release the hold and roll Taker into the casket. The IC champion puts the Undertaker in and he goes to close the lid shut, but Taker gets an arm out and it looked like that may have hurt. I think the Undertaker was supposed to grab Goldust here, but he missed. Goldust sits on top of the casket while trying to close it over and the Undertaker uses all his strength to send Goldust flying. Back in the ring we see the dead man's jumping clothesline, another clothesline sends both men out of the ring again. Taker tries to use a chair but he ends up getting kicked in the face and when the two get back inside the ropes Undertaker gets put down with a power slam followed by a diving clothesline. For some reason, Goldust then covers The Undertaker and the referees have to remind him that this is a casket match, so Goldust tries to weaken the dead man even more with old school and this plan backfires. The Undertaker says it's over, we see the tombstone pile driver. Undertaker opens up the casket and Mankind appears, The Undertaker's arch nemesis at this point. Mankind applies the mandible claw, The Undertaker ends up in the casket, Goldust wins the match and look, that casket lid has had its hinges ripped completely off and Mankind still locks the casket shut following the match. Goldust retains the IC belt, smoke then begins coming out of the casket, Mankind and Goldust head back up the ramp and Beware of Dog 2 ends with Paul Bear opening up the casket and there's no one there. As Paul Bear begins to panic, the lights go out in the arena and The Undertaker's theme music plays to end the show. I wouldn't say the combined Beware of Dog 1 and 2 shows are all that good, but you can definitely give WWF a pass on this one. They did the right thing by giving fans the additional matches during the encore presentation and I thought the company handled the whole thing pretty well. The Caribbean strap match looked like it took a lot out of both competitors, so if you like slow burners I'd recommend checking that one out. The casket match isn't terrible either, but we have seen better. I feel the same way about HBK and Bulldog and you can find better matches between these two. All in all it's a very mediocre show and a very average show, but again, given the circumstances you can't really complain. Beware of Dog is an oddity, it shows us what happened when Mother Nature made WWF do the J.O.B. So watch these shows as a curiosity and nothing more.
Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this one, and please take care.